Right, hello everyone. Good whatever time of day this is you're watching this. Welcome to the floor. Now today video we're doing a bit of a capacity upgrade for the battery bank for the solar. So I've got a solar flex. Da -da -da -da. Let's zoom in. Some tiny batteries. A solar flex SFL 130mf. This is a 12 volt battery. It is 130 amp hours. And what are we looking at? Yeah, 80 amp CS. Uh, 100 amp C20 and basically just means drawing at different rates what you're actually going to get out of it so mine's a 24 volt system so I'm going to get two of these so there they are there's the two batteries we're going to add so that's going to give me 130 amp hours of extra capacity at 24 volts but before these go into service we have going to check a couple of things so we need to know what the voltage is going to be of both cells to make sure they're going to be somewhat balanced otherwise we're going to have to charge them separately and then bring them together so we've got the voltmeter out quality vichy not the greatest thing but it's my indoor multimeter and first battery is at 12.48 12.4 volts and the next one is 12.48 so they're bang on the set so we're not going to have to do any balancing at all now these got to connect obviously these rather than having useful things like uh, screw terminal posts we're going to have to use some of these battery terminals on them I bought four and these ones are quite simple the way they work let's bring them in as you've probably seen loads of these before let's move that to the side so they work by uh you thread the wire on the side and you do the screws up and it clamps down on the conductor they are marked this one is positive little p there you just about make it out and negative is negative you just see it at the top there so we uh, take these off we get our positive should fit the positive post quite well it does Ooh, here we come and the negative one should fit the negative post it does good so positive to negative will give us our 24 volts so I've already uh, what I've done is I've bought some 35 mil copper cables proper copper nice flexible stuff and you can see how it terminates on you ram it in there you should probably put like a ferrule on it or tin the wire but I'm not drawing massive amps through these because it's gonna be part of the pack so what have I put on there? I've put the positive on already. That's going to go from VAR and probably going to have a nice loop about that size to the next one. So let's get some tools out. Let's put some tools. <laughs> These are not the tools you're going to use for connecting a 35 amp hour battery, 35 millimeter square cable up. But it's very windy and stormy outside so I'm not going back to the van. So we want that. Let's get her off there, she's gone on pretty tight ready. And try these snips, I'm just going to get into it. And we're going to tack it a few strands at a time. You say, oh, when you get proper cutters out, they're outside and I'm not going to shoot. Cut away a little bit more each time. Close. Right, I'm going to hack the, way, the rest of the way through this off camera. Now it's approximately one hour later, we have severed the cable into two. So now what we need to do is cut the outer sleeving off and wire it up a bit. Yeah, this is simple stuff. If you don't know how to do this, you probably shouldn't be watching this channel. Alright, that took a while. I ended up using a different pair of scissors. It shows my reluctancy to go to the van and get my proper knife out. So that one was a positive. We need a negative. So let's uh, undo the screws. Do a bit. My bent screwdriver. Once again, not going to the van. I really could go to the van, but you know, you're indoors. You don't want to go back out and mess with stuff again. So that came around like that. So let's have this one like that. 
and just going to get all the conductors in the hole which is a bit hard because somebody just made a pig's ear of cutting it we've already bird caged a few of them nicely you will all fit I refuse to let you beat me it's going to beat me because some of them still aren't going in fine I'm going to have a few careless careless whiskers sticking out the side wind this in now the other problem we're going to have is that the battery bank is currently full so the second we connect this into circuit it's going to use the battery bank to backward charge this pair of batteries bit of a pain but oh well they're going to have to equalize it somehow there we go perfect so that can sit on there, positive, yep, and negative, and there we go, so now our battery bank, yep, there we are, was originally 12 point something, 12.51 volts, you can see it there, and across the entire pack now we have 24.97 which is ideal so that's how we wire our 24 volt system we've lost a nut off this one so put that nut back on there as yeah, simple as that i'm not going to tighten this up yet because we're going to get this outside sat on top of the existing battery bank and then we've just got to run a negative to the negative output to the inverter and positive to the positive output which is also the bus rail for the solar chargers so what we've also got to do, I've found a piece of well, the one of the cables that came with the inverter. It is it's probably 35, 25 mil square. So this is actually thinner cable. That's not going to bother me because there's only going to be two very short lengths. And I'm just going to run one side off and down and the other side off and down to where it's got to go. So I'm going to, need to cut this in half. So I'm going to hack this away again with a pair of scissors and a pair of snips and go very slowly at it and we'll go from there. I can't believe this. I probably could have done this with all of these uh, red handled IKEA scissors in the first place. Because she's straight through. And decent scissors. It's my IKEA ones. <laughs> Not endorsed by IKEA. Alright, so now we're gonna do the same as I did earlier. Just gonna nip away at the outer sleeve ring with the scissors. This turned out to be the easiest way if you don't have a like an exacto knife or something handy and pull and there you go and one of these is going to be negative one's going to be positive so we're going to do this twice and wind the screws out that uh, goes on there it should be easier because this wire is technically thinner which goes all the way through to the end that's the idea clamp them in. Wind those down. This is probably one of the least technical videos I'll ever do but some people like watching people wire up strange solar things. So the current battery bank is 24 volt obviously. I think it's 250, 260 amp hours. So we're adding another 130 on that. Sorry for the pause, calculator. So the original battery bank is 252 amp hours. We're adding 130, bring us to a grand total of 382 amp hours of storage. Now, I wasn't having any trouble, any trouble with a lack of storage originally. It was um, more the fact that I've got enough solar input now. So I've got four um whatever they are four times i think they're 200 watt panels so there's 800 watts potential input plus the other three so 120 watt times three calls that plus 800 oh plus Try again. so 360 watts it is then we plus the 800 which brings us to 1160 watts coming in so yeah, 
I was finding is the solar panels were charging the battery very quickly and the rest of the energy wasn't being used so if we can store more energy then we can potentially use more energy and during the summer it'd be nice if I don't have to use any grid power at all I mean if I were to get another two of these I mean these were cheap what were they 70 78 quid or something that's not it's not bad going really and you only have to buy two of them to make up the 24 volt pack yeah so it was 155 pound for two the two batteries delivered they were off Tanya batteries very very good place to buy your batteries from Tanya on eBay or Tanya on their website uh, yeah the 74 pound 49 each and free postage and the packing they come in is brilliant I've uh, bought a lot of batteries and sometimes you get ones that arrive damaged so buying them from Tanya where they they've got packaged the actual battery will come it's got all the transport plugs are still in they say take them out immediately but I haven't finished transporting them yet um, <laughs> and yeah they come in this as they are then they're in a vacuum bag so there's a vacuum sealed bag vacuumed around them and then in a cardboard box with packing walls on it made out of more shredded cardboard so there's no bubble wrap which i hate bubble wrap is just it's annoying it's hard to get rid of and it's not as protective as a nice cushion of cardboard really so yeah i can't i can't fault them and it is next day delivery so if you order it within a certain time window they just turn up and never had a problem i mean i buy all my the little batteries for the jet ski for the lawnmower that's got one from tanya on it uh, the UPS battery came from Tanya in the other video. I think it came from Tanya. I might not have done. Probably should have done. If it hadn't, didn't. And I'm lying. But who knows? But yeah, I can't fault them. Good place to buy batteries. So just finishing up the positive terminal, which is going to go down to the actual main termination point of the battery pack, where it splits out and goes up to the inverter. And then move this all outside and unfortunately outside it's extremely windy and it's getting dark but that's not going to stop us there we go so now we have our battery pack take that one off there good so there we have our output leads ready to join onto the existing pack easy as that simple isn't it simple simple when you know how even if you don't know how it doesn't take much to learn everything's on the internet and very easy to work out the only other thing we're going to do in the future is we're going to do lithium which is going to involve splitting the pack up again because yeah and the only thing i haven't thought about is i don't know which end of my current battery pack is positive so these might end up facing this way out or this way in either way it's getting dark let's get on and do it right we're now out in the uh the battery area and as you can see, I put the new batteries on top. You got the uh, main ne negative there, and then it passes through. And that's the link between the two packs there to make it from 12 to 24 volts. So these are in um, parallel, then series at that red wire, then back to parallel. And that end wire is where the power goes off up to the power inverter. I know this is a mess at the moment, but and the charge controllers, which are both sat there quite happily. So when you connect up our uh, negative side here, so with any luck, I'm hoping that reaches. <laughs> it's not going to reach, is it? We're making it. Right. That's got to reach there. Oh, it's like I designed it to fit. As you can probably tell, it's quite windy. Oh, I just my lights falling off. One second, try again. <laughs> Just been digging with my spanner. So, yes. as far as I know, these are 13s, they usually are. And today is no different. Tightened up nicely. You might be wondering why I haven't got a battery box uh, on the to do list. Oh, these ones are 10 mils. Nothing's really using the uh, inverter at the moment. Don't want to completely disconnect it. Why do you say that? 
not much coming on the solar side at the moment, so I'm going to be the end of the world. Check that really, aren't I? Yeah, zero. So that's good. I've got no power coming in from the solar system. Disconnect this very quickly, get that one on there, get that one back on. That's the wrong size terminal, you use the other one to clamp it. Yes, this is the big storm that's hitting the country. They're available. <laughs> so we've got to do the same here and the same on the opposite end. So you see how that's doing. Let's do the same over here. So put these batteries in. This whole bank is sleeping. Oh well, it is what it is. So we'll move this one a bit closer because it's going to suffer the same problem. Charge control, don't you reckon? That was a nice sound. <laughs> Leave it discharged that quickly. Ridiculous. Yeah, so maybe some creatures have decided to start living on the charge control. Here's what happens. Dragging power from the bottom pack and putting it into these two to balance the pack, which is a bit of a pain, but dropped. What I also need to check is how much uh, weather coin they did imbalance between this lot yet. Because they've been in service for quite a while. And yeah, it sounds like we've got to take a charge controller down to do a bit of maintenance. So, so we uh, go in, we just want to check the balance of the packs again. So, we already know what these ones will look like. So, this has probably gone up a bit now 12.92, 12.3, and the bottom packs, there, 13.44, and 12.439 So what we've actually got is the bottom pack is dis imbalanced So at some point I'm going to have to uh, separate the, yeah, the red packs out and get them balanced up Or, I wonder if they do a balancer for it, I expect they do, for the lead acid So yeah, something I need to pay attention to is uh, one pack's full and one pack's not Mmm, joy, right here yeah. That's what I've been out here and I fired that one up on it so that charge control is making a noise now it's definitely uh this one 
and it's making noise because I think the fan's given up. I don't know if you've ever seen it before, but you zoom in, it's actually, it doesn't want to sit in, it's floating away from the case. Whereas the other one is solid. Hmm, it's all right, we need to get a new fan. Shouldn't be doing that. Yeah. Oh, need that sorted before the summer comes. Up this little video here. So the power indicator is coming up at 90%. 25.9 volts and the current shunt isn't connected, so we can ignore it. And after that, it's got dark outside. As you can see, the storm has flattened the panels onto the floor. The ones on the roof have stayed, but those ones, yeah, they fell down. So, next time.